President Obama, but we're going to do it now. We're going to follow through on our commitment for me to address the Muslim world from a Muslim capital. We are going to follow through on many of my commitments to do a more effective job of reaching out. Listening, as well as speaking to the Muslim world. And I you're going to see me following through with dealing with the drawdown of troops in Iraq. So that Iraqis can start taking more responsibility. And finally, I think you've already seen a commitment, in terms of closing Guantanamo. MR Melum, absolutely. President Obama, and making clear that even as we are decisive in going after terrorists, organizations that would kill innocent civilians, that we're going to do so on our terms. And we're going to do so respecting the rule of law that I think makes America great. MR Mellum, President Bush framed the war on on terror conceptually in a in a way that was very broad. War on terror and he used sometimes certain terminology that the that the many people Islamofascism won. President Obama, right. MR Melum, you've always framed it in a different way, specifically against one group called Al-Qaeda. President Obama, right. MR Melum, and their collaborators. And and is this one way of President Obama I think that you're making a very important point.
and and that is that the language we use matters. And what we need to understand is, is that there are extremist organizations whether Muslim or any other faith in the past that will use faith as a justification for violence. We cannot paint with a broad brush a faith as a consequence of the violence that is done in that faith's name. And so you will I think see our administration be very clear in Distinguishing between organizations like Al-Qaeda that espouse violence MR Melum, right. President Obama, espouse terror and act on it and people who may disagree with my administration and certain actions. or may have a particular viewpoint in terms of how their countries should develop. We can have legitimate disagreements. MR Melum, true. President Obama, but still be respectful. I cannot respect terrorist organizations that would kill innocent civilians and we will hunt them down. But to the broader Muslim world what we are going to be offering is a hand of friendship. MR Melum, will the United States ever live with a nuclear Iran? And if not, how far are you going in, the direction of preventing it? President Obama, you know, I said during the campaign that it is very Important for us to make sure that we are using all the tools of you. S power, including diplomacy, in our relationship with Iran. Now, 
The Iranian people are a great people. The Persian civilization is a great civilization. Iran has acted in ways that's not conducive to peace and prosperity in the region their threats against Israel. Their pursuit of a nuclear weapon which could potentially Set off a an arms race in the region that would make everybody less safe. Their support of terrorist organizations in the past none of these things have been helpful. But I do think that it is important for us to be willing to talk to Iran. To express very clearly where our differences are, but where there are potential avenues for progress. And we will, over the next several months, be laying out our general framework and approach. And as I said during my inauguration speech, If countries like Iran are willing to unclench their fist, they will find an extended hand from us. MR Melum, sir, I really appreciate it. President Obama, thank you so much. Mr. Mellum, thanks a lot. President Obama, I appreciate it. MR Melum, thank you. President Obama, thank you. One Boyle, Michael. The War on Terror in American Grand Strategy, International Affairs, 84, March 2008, p. 196. Via Wikipedia. Barack Obama Address at American Israel Public Affairs Committee Conference
delivered May 22, 2011, Walter E. Washington Convention Center, Washington, D.C. Good morning. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please, have a seat. Thank you. What a remarkable, remarkable crowd. Thank you, Rosie, for your very kind introduction. I did not know you played basketball. I will take your word for it. Rosie. Thank you for your many years of friendship. Back in Chicago, when I was just getting started in national politics. I reached out to a lot of people for advice and counsel, and Rosie was one of the very first. When I made my first visit to Israel, after entering the Senate, Rosie You were at my side every step of that profound journey through the Holy Land. So I want to thank you for your enduring friendship, your leadership, and for your warm introduction today. I also want to thank David Victor, Howard Coer, and all the board of directors. And let me say that it is wonderful to look out and see so many great friends. including a very large delegation from Chicago. Alan Salo, Howard Green. Thank you all. I want to thank the members of Congress who are joining you today who do so much to Sustain the bonds between the United States and Israel, including Eric Cantor Steny Hoyer. And the tireless leader I was proud to appoint as the new chair of the DNC, Debbie Wasserman Schultz.
We're joined by Israel's representative to the United States, Ambassador Michael Oren. And we're joined by one of my top advisors on Israel and the Middle East for the past. Four years and who I know is going to be an outstanding ambassador to Israel, Dan Shapiro. Dan has always been a close and trusted advisor and friend, and I know that he will do a terrific job. And at a time when so many young people around the world are standing up and making their voices heard. I also want to acknowledge all the college students from across the country who are here today. No one has a greater stake in the outcome of events that are unfolding today than your generation. And it's inspiring to see you devote your time and energy to help shape that future. Now, I'm not here to subject you to a long policy speech. I gave one on Thursday in which I said that the United States sees the historic changes sweeping. The Middle East and North Africa as a moment of great challenge. But also a moment of opportunity for greater peace and security for the entire region, including the State of Israel. On Friday, I was joined at the White House by Prime Minister Netanyahu. And we reaffirmed we reaffirmed that fundamental truth that has guided our presidents and prime ministers for more than 60 years that even while we may at times disagree. As friends sometimes will, the bonds between the United States and Israel are unbreakable and the commitment of the United States to the security of Israel is ironclad. A strong and secure Israel is in the national security interest of the United. States not simply because we share strategic interests.
although we do both seek a region where families and children can live free from the threat of violence. It's not simply because we face common dangers, although there can be no denying that. Terrorism and the spread of nuclear weapons are grave threats to both our nations. America's commitment to Israel's security flows from a deeper place and that's the values we share. As two people who struggled to win our freedom against overwhelming odds. We understand that preserving the security for which our forefathers and foremothers fought must be the work of every generation. As two vibrant democracies, we recognize that the liberties and freedoms we cherish must be constantly nurtured. and as the nation that recognized the state of Israel moments after its independence. We have a profound commitment to its survival as a strong, secure homeland for the Jewish people. We also know how difficult that search for security can be. Especially for a small nation like Israel living in a very tough neighborhood. I've seen it firsthand. When I touched my hand against the western wall and placed my prayer between its ancient stones. I thought of all the centuries that the children of Israel had longed to return to their ancient homeland. when I went to Stirat and saw the daily struggle to survive in the eyes of an eight-year-old. Boy who lost his leg to a Hamas rocket, and when I walked among the Hall of Names at Yad Vashem. I was reminded of the existential fear of Israelis when a modern dictator seeks nuclear weapons and threatens to wipe Israel off the face of the map face of the earth. because we understand the challenges Israel faces. I and my administration have made the security of Israel a priority.
it's why we've increased cooperation between our militaries to unprecedented levels. It's why we're making our most advanced technologies available to our Israeli allies.